The consultations are being attended by a Ukrainian government delegation, which will raise the issues of aircraft deliveries and the expansion of the armed coalition. Kiev now needs a large amount of ammunition to fend off a Russian offensive. Meanwhile, more deliveries are gradually emptying the military warehouses of Western countries. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg reports that Ukraine is consuming ammunition at a rate that is many times over production capacity. And we see uh, no signs that uh, President Putin uh, is preparing for peace. Uh, what we see is the opposite. Uh, he is preparing for more war, for new offensives and uh, new attacks. So it makes it just even more important that uh, NATO allies and partners um, uh, provide more support uh, to Ukraine. And we will meet uh, later on today in the US-led uh, contact group uh, for uh, Ukraine and address the urgent needs for uh, increased support to Ukraine. Kiev expects a meeting of NATO defence ministers in Brussels to conclude with an agreement on further deliveries of heavy equipment. President Vladimir Zelensky cites Poland's position as an exemplary in supporting Ukraine. This week our diplomatic marathon will continue. The first stage is the Ramstein Group meeting in Brussels. Probably the negotiations will be reflected in concrete decisions. I hope that the next stage of the talks, scheduled until the 24th of February, will also prove fruitful, just like the last Ramstein meeting on January the 20th. Ukrainians welcomed and hoped for change in the narrative of the NATO chief yesterday, who acknowledged that the transfer of the planes would not make the alliance a party to war with Russia. We've also requested uh, F-16s, and it is also something that we take very seriously. Of course, this is um, a complex uh, weapon system, uh, and we have to debate this with our partners, also with the United States, and we have to think uh, about feasibility. The United States has officially rejected Kiev's request for aircrafts for the time being, but there is a feeling in the US Defense Department that supporting Ukraine's air force would be the right and perhaps even indispensable step. Kremlin is still betting that it can wait us out, but one year on, we are as united as ever. And that shared resolve will help sustain Ukraine's momentum in the crucial weeks ahead and help Ukraine travel the challenging road that lies beyond. And looking around this room today, I know that our unity will only grow. We all understand the stakes. Defense Minister Mariusz Błaszczak is representing Poland in Brussels. Poland initiated the formation of an international armed coalition for embattled Ukraine in January. More countries have declared their participation in the coalition. As I reported earlier, we shared with my German counterpart. Germany is building a coalition of countries that have Leopard 2 tanks. In Poland, Ukrainian soldiers receive training. They will be ready to operate these tanks as early as mid-March. So after that, it's just getting in sync. A previous meeting of Kiev's allies in Ramstein ended with Germany's landmark decision to transfer Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine. Their first deliveries are expected to arrive later this year. The tanks will be a great support to our army. When we use them in battle, we will begin to move closer to victory. Armoured vehicles are one of our main deficits. When we send these vehicles to the front line, they will save many soldiers' lives. The Russian offensive is concentrated around Bakhmut. The Wagner Group has captured Krasnaya Hora and regular troops are continuing their assault near Voleda in the Donetsk region. The Russians are suffering significant human and material losses in this area. The hospital resembles a military training ground. Any resemblance of this building to a medical facility is buried in the 20 craters of recent explosions. Despite the difficult conditions, we continue to offer inpatient treatment and mobile clinical services. In addition, the city's pharmacy was destroyed. So people come to us for medicine. It is difficult to meet their needs. United States General David Petraeus, in an interview with the German portal RND, acknowledged that the invasion of Ukraine will end when Russia's leaders realize their failures and realize that the war is unprofitable. According to the former commander of troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, further deliveries of weapons will hasten the day when Vladimir Putin realizes this.